What's up guys, it's Tony here. Are you currently on an overwhelming journey towards learning how to color grade your videos? Well, with the help of Dehancer Pro plugin for DaVinci Resolve, you can get your videos looking from this to this very easily and give your videos that next edge in looking like film. Now, just a disclaimer, I am no expert colorist here. I myself am still pretty fresh to this whole journey and I assume that anyone here watching is new to this too. So this video will act as a simple guide towards my own colouring workflow to achieve these desired looks as well as what I think overall about Dehancer plugin itself as there are plenty of other experts who can explain the ins and outs of DaVinci Resolve itself. Now this is also not a sponsored video so my opinions are true and mine alone. However they have sent me this program to try out and review and are offering a 10% discount with any purchases with the code Tony ATP Dehancer, so feel free to check out their site in the links down below after this video. All right, so in opening up DaVinci Resolve, the first thing I've done is just load a video into my timeline, and this has given me the single node here. So I'm just gonna do option S just to add six nodes, because that's what I'm gonna work with today. And then I'm going to be labeling, I'm using Control L. First one is going to be CST. My second, which I'll go into in a sec. My second node is going to be exposure. My third node is going to be white balance. My next node is gonna be look when it comes to curves and color. And then it's gonna be dehancer. And then it's going to be CST again. Okay, so first of all, with CST, I'm going to be, so we currently just have the nodes tab open. I'm going to be opening up the FX tab as we're going to be working with a color space transform. So what we're essentially doing with color space transform is kind of what the title says is we're transforming the original footage, which was shot on a Sony A7C on S-Log2 into a color space that is a lot more wider that will allow you to work with the colors and have more dynamic range in order to work with flexibility in terms of the color and the shadows and the highlights. So I'll explain it a bit more detailed, but first of all, we're gonna just search color space transform. Whoops, that's the Australian spelling. Um, and I'm gonna drag it onto the first node. And then I'm also gonna do the same for the last node and I'll go into why I'm doing that as well. So. With the color space transform, like I said, we're changing the, uh, what the footage was recorded as, which in this case, I recorded on Sony S gamut. And so that's the color space. And then the input gamma is S log two for me, because my camera doesn't do S log three. Um, so that is my input. Otherwise you would do S gamut three and um, S log three. If you were using a camera that, that allows you to record an S log three. So for the output color space, there's obviously a lot of opinions um, out there regarding what people choose in order to work with their video footage. But for me personally, um, I find that the DaVinci Wide Gamut for the color space, as well as the DaVinci Intermediate, is a pretty good um, base to start kind of editing your colors and your video from. The reason why I'll show you is if you go into the CIE Chromaticity Graph, you can see that here this Rec 709 graph is quite small, which is kind of not the color space you want to be working in. Whereas if you look at the DaVinci wide gamut here, this is a lot larger. So it's essentially allowing you to work within a larger color space so that you have that bigger range to work with and kind of get as much detail and color and contrast and brightness and darkness as you can from the video footage that you've recorded. So that's kind of why we do the color space transform into the DaVinci wide gamut. And then moving on to the last node, we're going to be changing that DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate to a Rec 709 as the Rec 709 is the color space that we essentially want to finish at. So that's the reason why we do that. So as you can see, the image looks very saturated, very bright. It's not exactly looking quite nice, but this is where we're gonna fix everything in between here, okay? I'll first of all go into the exposure node. So from here, I go into the primary color wheels where you have lift, gamma, gain, offset. 
What these essentially mean is lift is kind of responsible for the dark tones, gamma is responsible for the mid tones, gain is responsible for the high tones, and offsets kind of controls everything else. The best way to view this and see what effect it's having is just looking at the parade, where you can kind of see the effect that you're going to have. So as you can see here, it's really bright, and I kind of want some shadows to come back, so I'm going to toggle the, the lift tab here and kind of bring my shadows down. As you can see, as I'm bringing that down, this, it also brings this down, which is kind of what I want to do because I want to kind of spread out this um, waveform essentially a bit more to create a better dynamic range and contrast. So there's that. I also want to bring up the highlights a tiny bit more, which is also bringing this whole graph up as well, which is also kind of what I want without clipping the highlights and losing detail. And then I'm also going to just decrease this Actually, I'll raise it up a bit higher. And then with the offset, I'm just going to also bring that down a bit as well. So this kind of gives you quite more finer detail control in terms of your um, brightness and contrast to get you within the exposure that you want. I wouldn't really mess with the highlights and shadows because it's just not that detailed. So from there, I'll then move on to white balance. So from here, you can change tint and temperature if you want but I tend to just kind of go on the offset wheel and kind of just slightly change it in a certain direction. I kind of would like this to be in a much, bit of a cooler tone. About there. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna just adjust the look a bit. So before we go into the actual dehancer node, um, you can just kind of adjust the colors a bit to kind of bring you within a range that you kind of want to be in. So I'm gonna go into the curves here and go into hue versus saturation. And if you just click anywhere in the image, I kind of want to bring these oranges a bit darker. So if you use a dropper and press on where you want to go, it then kind of indicates where you want to be on the graph that you can adjust. And then you can just kind of drag that down to kind of bring down the brightness a bit because it's just looking a bit too bright. You don't want to go all the way because that will affect other parts of the image and not look very great either. So just kind of bring it down a tiny bit and I also want to adjust the greens as well. So I'm going to bring that down just to kind of desaturate that a tiny bit. You can also just add a spot on the curve if you want to kind of adjust a bit more higher range. But I think that looks okay. Also a little shortcut as well. If you want to see this in a lot bigger plane because obviously this is quite small. You can just press shift F and that will kind of zoom it in a bit more for you. So you can just kind of see a bit clearer or you can also press command F, which will also bring it full screen. So shift F or command F for just bringing up that picture. So it looks a bit better. Also as well, if you kind of want to see what the difference has made, what difference you have made on the image, you can also disable the node by pressing option D to disable all or command D just to disable one node and just press it again to undisable it. Okay, now that we've got kind of a better overall image, this is where the fun begins. In the effects tab, we're gonna go all the way down and you'll find Dehancer Pro plugin, which I'm gonna just drag and drop onto the Dehancer node. As you can see, it's gone absolutely wild, but we're gonna fix this um, as we go through it. So this is gonna be in this tab here in order to adjust everything. This is where the magic happens. Um, so the first main thing is, remember when we changed the color space into a DaVinci wide gamut? Well, since we did that, we want this source here to actually be the DaVinci wide gamut intermediate. So that will get us into the correct color space source in order to then work from there. Because then when we're done with that, it will then be converted into Rec 709 in the next color space transform node. So that's the first thing. I know some people have also um, just chosen their film camera and done that putting their source vendor and kind of, you know, adding all those things manually, but I just find that this works perfectly fine if you have the color space transform uh, nodes on either end. So we're gonna start off with that. You'll see that there's exposure, compensation, temperature, and all those things. I don't really use these in this Dehancer Pro plugin because, you know, I did all those adjustments in these nodes here, which kind of gives you a lot better control and also gives you a better look. So I generally tend to avoid these because you also don't want to do everything in one place um, because you want to make these minor exposures and see, you know, you want to toggle and see what difference it's making by, you know, 
disabling and enabling it, or if you want to change something, you can change it quite easily. So I would avoid using these. Next, into film. So this is where the film stock is going to give you that really great look. Um, there's so many options to choose from, and you just essentially got to see what works for you and what you generally like. I find that for this particular video that I took, the Fujifilm Velvia 50 tends to look a lot nicer. Um, in my opinion, because it kind of just gives that little bit of a red tinge to the image as well as um, Just yeah, kind of giving it quite a nice film like look There's also the option of a push and pull as well to kind of just adjust your look to how you want it to be um, It's kind of in this case It's kind of just adjusting the con like the brightness and the contrast But in some of the other films it kind of adjusts the temperature of the image a bit So it's kind of different for every film so for me personally, I wouldn't really want to touch that anyway because that's just adjusting the brightness, which, which I don't really need to do in this instance. So next is film developer and film compression. Once again, these are kind of just adjusting things that you have already adjusted in your other nodes. So I wouldn't adjust these things here particularly, but you can play around with it and see if you want to do that. Um, same thing with expand as well. I wouldn't really touch that as well. Okay, print. So this is another spot where you can really change the look of your image as well. Um, but actually, before we even do that, I just want to show the difference that that has made already. So if we kind of press Shift F and we kind of toggle, that was what it looked like before. And that's what it looked like already. And we're also not done yet. You can see it's a little quite grainy, but I'm going to be adjusting that very shortly as well. So um, I might even just keep that open since we're just focusing on this tab. So print is where you can also apply quite another kind of strong film look as well. The most popular one is probably the Fujifilm 3513 as it generally creates quite a nice, you know, yeah, it just makes it look really nice essentially. Um, so I quite like the look of that, but Cineon just kind of flattens it out a bit too much for me. That's just a bit too much contrast and that's a bit too dark. Obviously, if you apply these, you can once again, go back to your exposure wheels and adjust the contrast so that it does look nice. Um, but I personally just like the Fujifilm and once again, you can adjust those here or you can go back to your other nodes and adjust it. So once again, that's before and that's after so far. Color head, this kind of once again changes colors, wouldn't recommend it. You've adjusted it in your other tabs, better control in the other tabs. Um, film grain, okay, so this is the part of Dehancer that gets quite exciting and quite nice. So in terms of film grain, you have options of eight millimeters, 60 millimeters, or 35 millimeters. Essentially, the smaller the millimeters, the larger the grain sizes will be, and the higher the ISO, the more amount of grains there will be. But you can also adjust the kind of strength as well with this slider here. So for me personally, I don't really want that many, that much graininess in my image. So I'll go for 65 millimeters and ISO of 50, and I might even just bring that down because you'll still see the grain, but I don't want it to be too intense personally. And just make sure that's enabled as well. Halation is the red and orange that essentially surrounds bright light sources and contrasting edges. Um, you'll see that when I enable it here, it kind of adds a bit of that red tinge to the image, which is kind of a film style as well. And once again, the lower in the millimeters, essentially the more stronger the effect looks um, with the halation. Um, and if you choose no rem jet as well, it makes it look even more crazier. Um, so if you're looking for that real like kind of in your face halation vibe, then no rem jet is definitely the way to go. I don't want it to be that strong. So I'm just gonna go once again, 65 millimeters. Um, I mean, no rem jet doesn't look too bad with that. So I might keep it at that. And you can once again, adjust the amount and make sure that's enabled. Next is bloom. Bloom is essentially the softening and dispersion of light sources. It kind of gives everything that kind of soft looking light feeling. And that same kind of application here, if you want it to be a lot more soft, then you apply, you choose the lower millimeters and you can also increase the amplify that as well as much as you want. So if you enable that, you kind of see the effect that has compared to before. So once again, just creating that glow, I might bring that down a bit. I don't need it to be that much, maybe 16 mils. Yeah, so if you before and after, you can kind of see the way that's affecting the image, which is great. Film damage, pretty self-explanatory. It's just essentially adding scratches, dusks, marks to the image um, to just give it that film vibe once again. Um, once It's just personal preference, how much you want to use it. 
And once again, eight millimeters just adds a lot more of that dust in there. So if you can see there, more of a film vibe and 65 less so. So I'm gonna keep that disabled because I don't really want that. Film breath is essentially um, kind of random changes in contrast, exposure, colors that can be present when it comes to analog film that usually come from imperfections with the lens. So I'll let you see how that looks here. Once again, eight millimeters more stronger. So it kind of gives you that kind of pulsating vibe if you want that kind of style as well. So that's pretty cool, but I'll disable that. Gate weave is essentially like a jittering effect um, that comes with kind of pulling a reel of film through a camera. Um, so I'll show you how that looks. It's just very subtle. Once again, if you want it to be more stronger then you choose eight millimeters, essentially a bit of a shaking effect of film. But I'm gonna disable that. Okay, overscan, this is a really cool feature. So if you ever see those videos on social media or kind of anywhere where they show kind of like your video within like a framing of that looks like film, then this is exactly how they do it because you can choose all sorts of types here. Let's enable that. So you can choose this one, which is a pretty popular one that I've seen on social media. So that looks pretty cool. And then there's the option of like this one as well. Super 16 millimeters, ultra, super 35. I just think these look really nice. I'm definitely gonna be using these at some point. You can change a lot of detail about what how you want these to look. So that's, I think this is a great feature that I will definitely be using a lot. And then lastly, but not least, um, vignetting. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'll probably apply a bit of vignetting to this you can do this as well in the DaVinci Resolve itself, but it's right here, so I would actually wouldn't mind using it. And then the rest is kind of just not something that you really need to worry about. So this is, this is the original look, which I adjusted the exposure and contrast and a bit of the colors to. And this is the final look. Pretty cool, right? I can't believe how easy it is to get to this point and I just love the way that it looks. Coming from someone who's been struggling with color grading, it is fantastic. I'll also show you another example as well. So another video I also edited. So this is the before, and this is the after. And I'll play that video as well. So kind of just really cool where you can just kind of, you know, this just looks like a normal video. It looks nice, but to really give it that next edge, just having that plugin just really creates that cinematic feel. And I just am in love with it. Just being able to add like a film style to it, being able to add grain, halation, bloom, all of these features all added together will make any piece of video look like a professional film video. And I'm just so excited to see what I can do with it in the future as well. Overall, the Dehancer plugin is well thought out to the finest detail to really make color grading simple and so much more fun as it is usually an incredibly overwhelming task at first. As a beginner, I can safely say that this will make my video editing process a lot easier as I can focus more on crafting and editing a better story without spending so much time on grading. I do believe though that a lot of the features of the plugin are not particularly necessary when it comes to color correction and exposure as those can be done in the other nodes for much better control and results. But if you really wanna make this process very simple, it can almost entirely be done in the Dehancer plugin itself. I also have even had the chance to try out the app, which has the same features you see in the Dehancer plugin, conveniently in an app format, to be applied to both photos and videos with their extensive array of film profiles and presets. Here are some examples of befores and afters. However, this also requires a different paid subscription, which can also be quite steep with all of this in mind, it begs the question, is Dehancer worth the cost involved? For a steep price of 450 USD for lifetime access for Dehancer Pro, I would say it isn't worth the price for anyone just looking to grade a video or two. However, if you are really wanting to take video editing seriously, I truly think the features are well worth it with a longer term investment, especially with the amount of time that you save. And if you want 10% off, just a reminder that you can use my promo code TONYATPDEHANCER to make that little bit more affordable. 
All right, that's it for the video, guys. If you learned anything from this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and also check out my other travel videos below as well. I'll catch you next time. See ya.